How many people, when things are going wonderful, they're wonderful, and things are going crappy, they're crappy? Is that not most of us, really? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. You ever meet somebody that's just right here? If things are horrible down here, they're still right here. If things are wonderful, they're still right here. They're just even. They're even. They don't let the circumstances pull them one way or the other. They're even. And yet they have joy in the midst of whatever's going on. You can only do that through the Spirit of God. Amen. You can only do that through the Spirit of God. It's an actual fruit. What's a fruit? If I got an apple tree, I'm going to get apples, right? Yeah. If I have an orange tree, I'm going to get oranges. If I got an orange tree and it gives me apples, I got a problem. But if we have the Spirit of God, we will have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. And then one of the attributes of love is what? Joy. Joy. You will have it. He goes on here, he says, Will you? Back in John 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Your dad says, God turned his back on Jesus on the cross so he could look at us. Okay. You want to say that louder? God turned his back on Jesus on the cross so he could look at us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I want to just focus on this again, should. The gift has been given. He gave it. What's the, what's the word gave mean? It's a gift. If I have a, if I got a hundred bucks in my hand and I want to give it to somebody, but they never come get it. You got a hundred bucks? Okay. No, I don't. I said, yeah. I'm just, I'm waiting. Well, I'm not going to leave <laughs> this table. <laughs> Bill's going to go over the table. <laughs> but if I have a gift, but you never come pick it up, whose fault is that? It's our own fault. Now, he has given us eternal life, and he's made that available. Let's talk about some of the other things he's made available. How about deliverance? How about healing? How about freedom? How many times... Freedom. And let's talk about freedom for a minute. How many times are you stopped from doing a thing because of fear? Just think of it. Oh, I'm oh, afraid to tell the cashier Jesus loves me. Jesus <laughs> loves me. I'm terrified. Now, we can be big mouth over here, but when it comes to saying Jesus loves you, all of a sudden, all of a sudden we're a mouse. We're afraid. What will they think? Someone I'll never see again, maybe. But I'm terrified to say Jesus loves you. Oh, my God. What's that? Fear. My Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. He has not given us fear, but fear is the thing that kills us and prevents us from moving all the time. And fear is what? Unbelief. Not faith. But He's given us the gift. What do we have to do? We have to take it. We have to reject the thing the enemy has put on us for all these years and accept that good gift that God has given us. You know what that takes? Faith, Faith and choice. Choose. There's a scripture that talks about us electing God. I believe it's in Ephesians. We choose Him over the world. Okay, as we continue on here in John, it says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then again we see the might be, should be, should not. We have all these words that we see that he's made it available, but it is yet up, up to us to do what? Choose to accept it. Choose to receive it. If we go back over to James, which again Paul talked on a little bit today, and I'll give you the verses here in just a second. Chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Before I jump into this, let me just ask, how many people do you know that have been introduced to Jesus Christ, but they ride the fence? Right, the case been there. Ride the fence. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That guy came to my house and said, how do I know what's a good religion? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, there aren't any good religions. 
but there is Jesus Christ. And he's the only one that died for you. He's the only one that died for you. James, here he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men. Give it to who? All, all men. men. All men. How many people need wisdom in their lives? How many people need just wisdom in their lives about their job, about their marriage, about the relationship, about their kids, about everything? How many people need wisdom? God says, let him ask of who? God, God that giveth to who? All, all men. men. How? Liberally. Liberally. And upbraideth not. He doesn't withhold. He didn't even conditionalize it. He just gives it. You guys remember the story of Solomon? Yes. And he and God said, What do you want? I'll give it to you. And what did he ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom. Good prayer. <coughs> and what did God give Bless you? Everything. Wisdom and everything that goes along with it. Alright? Alright. But let him ask in what? Faith. Faith. How many people ask God for something and then their prayer is, in their mind, they're like, man, I really don't expect it. Or they get it and go, boy, I don't believe that happened. <laughs> right? That's God moving despite our unbelief, right? Yeah. <laughs> but let him ask how, in faith, that's with the expectation that God's going to deliver. There's another verse in Hebrews that says, oh, you know, I just got to look it up. Don't switch there. I'll just tell you. I'll just read it to you. But I don't want to screw it up. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. you got to ask, believing you're going to get an answer. It's like when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to ask, believing he's going to fulfill his part of the bargain. That's expectation. You know, my little one comes to me asking for stuff all the time. She has no inhibitions about asking for stuff. My dad tells the story, you know, kidding around, that if you know, if he had a candy bar and he walked in the front door when I was a little kid, would I go, Oh, Father, could I but just touch the wrap of the candy bar? Would that be me or would I, Dad, thanks, is that mine? See, which one would it be? The second one. Number two? I dare say if I walk in with a candy bar tomorrow. Yeah, it would probably be the same. Especially if, well, my wife would be more than one wrestling for the candy bar. But anyway, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Next step. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now doesn't this sound contradictory on the surface? God says he'll give it, but over here it says I can't receive anything. If you're double-minded. Hold on. This receive here is about you taking it from God, not God giving it. God gives it. He gave his sacrifice of his son on the cross. He gives you wisdom on <coughs> how to run your life. He gives you all you need, but you have to receive it. And the thing that will prevent you from taking it from God is this double-mindedness. Remember, this was the big key for you, Paul, that one year when Steve was down. This double-mindedness right here, you can't ride the fence, man. You can't run the fence. Pick a side. Pick a side. If you're running the fence, God has all these things for you, but you're never going to take them because you're never going to actually believe He'll do it. You can't run the flesh and run the spirit. You're going to either do one or the other, but you can't do both. You can't walk in the good things of God and choose the flesh all the time. It ain't going to work. you got to pick a side. You cannot run the fence. You've got to choose. And what I'm trying to have people see is that we have a loving, caring God whose entire his entire relationship with us is based on his love for us, not his want to destroy us. He loves us. I don't know of anyone else that loves me enough to die for me while I was at my worst. 